Hello, everyone, and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Dogomomo Hawaii show. And this is when we talk about and talk about the preservation of mid-century architecture of the 20th century here in the Hawaiian Islands. And uh, I'm DeSoto Brown, and I am the Bishop Museum historian. I'm also the host of this program for right this minute. And we've got two guests today. And guests, may I ask you to both introduce yourselves? Sure. I'm Allison Chu with Dogomomo Hawaii. I'm an architectural historian. And I'm Alyssa Carson, Dokomomo Hawaii, and I'm an architect. Well, thank you both very much. And I'm happy that we all three of us are here. And we're going to talk about metal railings and metal work today. And this is something which is kind of a lost art today, uh, something which you very rarely see, specifically the type that we're going to be talking about as we go through our program. So let's go to our first slide. And behind us has been this wonderful anthurium shaped railing which is the type of thing we're talking about today. But you have pointed out to me, because I'm not an architect, that today, this wonderful type of thing, artistic expression that it is, would be illegal because it doesn't fulfill the requirements for railings these days. And people could get caught in this and injured potentially. So we don't do it anymore. Correct. So as wonderful as this is, it's not something we're going to be repeating in the future. Let's go to our next slide. And what we're talking about now is railings. But custom railings. Now, railings were not always customized. Railings could come from a factory. And this is from a catalog. Does, do you even remember what this was? It was the Econorail was a proprietary name. And it was the catalogs were produced by the Newman Brothers in the 50s. OK. So this is an easy, cheap way to get a railing made for a new building. However, we're not talking about this type of thing. But let's go to another picture that looks very similar or from a similar type of this is from the what company? This one was a catalog from the Tennessee Fabricating Company. It mm -hmm. was produced in 1963. Right. And this is one page of many, right. which showed the variety of ornamental metal railings that people could choose from. Right. And they could order it. And this was produced on the mainland and then shipped to the customers. Correct. And uh, the one that we chose to pull out is the so-called oriental motif, which is, identified, which is described as, quote, adapted from the best designs of the ancient and wise oriental artists. That's the way they thought about it in Tennessee. Um, but I also <laughs> want to point yeah. out the one underneath it, which yeah. says non-directional design for the space age in yes. which we live. We do live in the space <laughs> age. I mean, I agree completely. Diamond patterns and jet age, et cetera, et cetera. Next slide, we see another interior application. We see interior applications of the similar. This is also from the Tennessee company, correct? Correct. And uh, what we're talking about is that this, at the time period for middle class people, this was a way to add elegance to your home. But the basic thing here, and, and not only are these railings, but they're also room dividers. Room dividers were a big thing at that time because there were open plan designs, but there also was a way mm -hmm. to differentiate the dining room from the living room, for example. Uh, particularly if everybody was living in a suburb where all the homes were standardized. So mm -hmm. this is a way to make your home different, to have the other housewives uh, envious of you because of how exactly. space age you were. Mm -hmm. And these were actually used in the pace setter homes. Uh, a lot of the custom railings were marketed for their charm, their durability, and their beauty. So it really speaks to uh, this idea of gracious hosting yep. and grac yeah. gracious right. living. It was very sophisticated. Oh, utterly. I mean, just take a look. As you can see. As you can <laughs> see, as is clearly evident. But what we're talking about is not standardized factory produced railings. And pardon me, my phone is making a squarey noise. Um, what we're talking about is in the next pictures. And we, what we had here was, here in the Hawaiian Islands, we had a number of welding companies. And these pictures, the picture of the welding, Islands welding is from the late 1930s. And the ad from the Yellow Pages is from 1953. And the industrial welding company ad specifies that among the things that they do, are cottage railing. So what we see here is railings being made for specific customers for specific uses that aren't from a factory that are unique. And we think that this is probably something that was pretty much just confined to the Hawaiian Islands and not seen in other parts of the mm -hmm. United States pretty much. Mm -hmm. So next picture, here is the start of sort of a chronological look at railings. And we start with the uh, railings at Iolani Palace. 
We think that there may be some Hawaiian symbolism incorporated in mm -hmm, them, mm -hmm. which is something that people would have done at that time. And you were saying that these might have been manufactured by the Honolulu Iron Works. Correct. Yes, so, I read somewhere that, it, that the Honolulu um, Iron Works did right. do these. Which was a substantial size factory at the time mm -hmm. and produced a lot mm -hmm. of big iron machinery in addition to more artistic stuff like this. Next picture. We come up in time to 1927, and this is the YWCA, the facade of the YWCA on Richard Street in downtown Honolulu. And this is a building designed by Julia Morgan, and she's mm -hmm. outstanding for being an early female architect. But the building is very much like uh, it's Italy and or the Mediterranean. This is very European. The use of the wrought iron on the railing on the third floor is very much in keeping with what was already standardized in Europe and had been in place probably for centuries. So although this is a building here in Honolulu, there's not very much that's Hawaiian about it. And it's not as unique as some of what we're going to be mm -hmm. at seeing as we go along. Next picture. So we have here an interior use. This is perhaps not as elegant as the Tennessee Fabricating Company ones, but this is a home that was built in Nuuanu in uh, the early 1900s. But this part of it is from probably the teens or the 20s, and it happens to have been my great-grandparents' house, and my great-grandfather was named Frederick Laurie. And here we see interior use of the wrought iron as a railing for the lower section, and then up in the upper corner, you can see it's for a second-level mezzanine. And you were pointing out that it's unusual because it's on top of a wooden balustrade base. Mm -hmm. It's not something you normally would have seen. Yeah, or the, the mixture of materials is very unique here. Right, right. Normally you'd think of the, the metal would be at the bottom and the wood on the top because it's less strong metal, but less strong material. In any case, going on, next picture. We come up to 1927. Uh, again, we were previously at 1927. And this is what we used to be called the Honolulu Academy of Arts. And I like the logo that you see in the center that says AHA because it reads the same for both sides. It's symmetrical. So if you're on the inside or the outside, you can still read it. Mm -hmm. The wrought iron railings and custom work at the front of this building is really noticeable. It's a really important part of it at, as you walk up to it. And below you can see a window that's got a metal grating over it. And we're going to see those motifs again as we mm -hmm. go further. Next picture. Here are the, the gates as they appear. And there are three panels that you can see on the right two of which use this very popular 1920s and 30s motif of a rising sun with sun rays coming out mm -hmm. of it. So that's a modern part of a more traditional, as you see, in some cases this is, a, again, emulating European styles of wrought iron used as protection and or for security. Next picture. So coming up in, in time, we come to 1947, the King Kalakaua building, which is a small commercial structure. It's, it looks much bigger than it actually is. Mm -hmm. And interestingly now, it's incorporating some of the ancient oriental artwork that we were seeing mm -hmm. about earlier in the metal work that's on the facade in the center of the building, which is clearly, again, not Western style, but Asian. And it's a little bit of customization on what's otherwise pretty much a concrete building. Mm -hmm. It's very distinct uh, signage yeah. of that signage. And wonderful signage that, again, is something that people wouldn't do today either, unfortunately. Next picture. Now, again, continuing in the commercial vein, the Hilo Hotel. And this, these sort of squished rectangles that have been pushed in on the sides are cut out of sheet metal. Yeah. Similar and, to the Anthurium railing that, that we, we saw, saw at the earlier. Beginning. Right. Mm -hmm. And the Hilo Hotel is not a hotel at the moment, but you said it's possibly going to be returned to being. We're possibly. hoping so. Yeah. We're yes. hoping so. <laughs> and, and I love how I love how simple but graphic this design exactly. element is. And unique. Again, very, this very is unique. unique. You're mm -hmm. not going to find it in any place else. Next picture. These are two different railings from two different bowling alleys. And very clearly in the upper left at the Stadium Bolodrome, you can see that that's a bowling ball with two bowling pins next to it. You said that this is in the cocktail lounge of the Stadium Bolodrome, which unfortunately Correct. is not functioning anymore, but the building is still standing. The lower picture is from Polly Lanes, and I think that those sort of little well, graduated circles are bowling balls that are you looking at at an angle, and they're sort of receding from you and getting smaller in their appearance. And I mean, how clever. 
for a commercial building to do something as cool as that. Next picture. This is the Kenrock Building, and the Kenrock Building on Kapiolani Boulevard actually consists of three separate buildings that are one complex that were built uh, over about a 10 or 12 year period. And they have these very simple railings, but the railings, there's a little more going on there than at first appearance. First of all, as you pointed out, the upright mm -hmm. is a round bar, it's not rectangular, whereas the horizontal sections are flat pieces of metal. They also emphasize very much the horizontal nature of those buildings. So this very simple railing really carries on that theme. And very elegantly and attractively, too, I mm -hmm. think. And I like how you caught these shadows that really extend into the distance. Right. And well, and also that. the shadows are a part of these. Mm -hmm. And we'll see that in some of our other pictures. Next picture. This is a small commercial building on uh, University Avenue. This is just Makai of what used to be University Square. And none of us remember the name of the building. It has this wonderful exterior stairway that's kind of floating in the air and kind of skeletal. Mm -hmm. But instead of just plain upright bars for the railing, they've got this sort of rhombus shape, which again shows that this is a custom touch that somebody went ahead and did for not very expensive building. Mm -hmm. It makes you, it actually makes you really want to see the rest of the building. Yeah. yeah. Because a lot of these railings, I think, as we've been seeing, mimic some of the design elements between right. just this very simple decorative component and the rest of the architecture. Right, right. exactly. So there's a repetition of, of themes. Mm -hmm. Right. Next picture. Now, we're, the, again, the aged wisdom of the ancient Orientals shows up again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was good enough for the Tennessee Fabricating Company. Um, we've got in the lower left, we've got the Kuan Yin Temple, which is on Vineyard okay. Boulevard, which was constructed about 1960. And mm -hmm. in the upper right, a building, the identity of which none of us is sure. We think, we're not sure if it's a private home or if it's some sort of a Chinese organization or perhaps a religious structure. But in both cases, we've got custom railings that incorporate Chinese characters. And I wasn't sure if the same character was showing up in both locations and you, my parents, parents confirmed, confirmed this, <laughs> that the uh, abstraction of this symbol is actually the Chinese character for longevity. Right. And that's a popular one. That's a very popular one. And we're going to yes. continue to see it. Uh, <clears throat> so again, we see it here in a religious structure. Next picture. Um, this is a commercial use of wrought iron that is really clever. It's LH for Liberty House, the Liberty House department store, which was very prominent here up until about uh, 2000. And this was the Kailua branch of the Liberty House. Correct. And it uses the LH abbreviation, which at the time all of us were very familiar with. So we could identify LH as Liberty House. And you said that this has been saved. Yes, mm -hmm. so this picture was taken before they did the renovation. And then they salvaged them and they have um, placed them on the interior of the building now. Bravo. Yay. I'm glad they did. Next picture. And this is the Queen Lidi Okalani Gardens condo mm -hmm. complex in Waikiki on Alawai Boulevard, uh, built in 1984. 1984. And explain what's going on with this okay, so arch gate. This <laughs> gate one, arch. well, the architecture itself has always uh, caught my eye. And when I went to look at it, this gate structure is very distinct. And it was actually galvanized steel. I know we're talking about <laughs> raw iron railings, yeah. but... Some of the paint has actually chipped away, and they had painted it black to look <laughs> like a more stately yes. and older yes. uh, piece of ironwork. Yes. yes, which is successfully done. Which was very successfully done. Yes. Next picture. And here's another commercial application. This is the Hawaii National Bank, mm -hmm. uh, which is on King Street in downtown Honolulu. I'm guessing it's from about 1980, just based on my yes. memory. And this decorative metal uh, <clears throat> bar, these bars, which are in the parking building, obviously, mm -hmm, the parking correct. section, which is correct. probably in the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, this was a Chinese uh, bank. This was a Chinese um, company when it was started. And so, again, it uses longevity. <laughs> and the, it, the interesting thing is that, it, that this that this is cross-cultural across the board in Chinese culture to use longevity as a symbol for both a commercial structure, a bank, as well as even a religious structure. And I was mm -hmm. going to make the joke, but 
<laughs> we won't make that jump. Okay, next picture. So this is again a Chinese uh, structure. Mm -hmm. This is the Waikiki Circle Hotel. You pointed out it was designed to look like a lantern. A Chinese lantern. A yes. Chinese lantern. Uh, built by a Chinese family. The matriarch mm -hmm. of the family purchased the land. And if you look carefully, it's difficult to see in this picture, but the railings just under the, the arm of the woman who is standing in on the left, the circular motifs actually do look Chinese. Mm -hmm. They actually look like uh, Chinese characters and or coins. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if this was uh, custom designed or whether they got this as a standard design from one of the factories we talked about earlier. But regardless, it does carry on a Chinese theme. And unfortunately, it's not there anymore. No, those are they've, not. Those railings are gone. Yeah, they've and been replaced with those vertical, standard yeah. vertical railings. Standard vertical ones that mm -hmm. fulfill the legal requirements or zoning requirements <laughs> now, or, or architectural requirements. Next picture. So now I'm going to shift into looking specifically at homes. And originally, when you look at these private homes in these pictures, the um, the uh, plantation homes in the upper right just have wooden railings at their front steps. And in the lower left, we see a prosperous Chinese family in their home in central Honolulu, which has got basalt or lava rock mm -hmm. walls mm -hmm. built as the base. Yeah. A shift away from that is to what we're going to be talking about. Next picture. And this is an advertisement from 1941 for a home that was located on Kapilani Boulevard. And it's still there. You mm -hmm. can see in the picture on the right, although it's been changed, it's been altered. And it's got one of those metal railings. So I'm going to say that those probably came into use in the late 1930s, and that would be keeping in, term, uh, in terms of what was popular at that time, too, in terms of streamlining and that type of stuff. So next picture. Now we're going to get into some of the railings themselves. And a lot of the houses from this time period, from the late 30s into maybe the early 60s, for the most part are pretty austere and don't have a lot of decoration mm -hmm. on them. And the metal railings of the front steps are an artistic touch of decoration that otherwise is absent. Next picture. So here's the hall home. Oh, mm -hmm. And what we like about this or what's noteworthy is the railing in the front and the railing in the back don't match. But the railing in the back, which is in the upper right corner, has this wonderful little freestanding thing that you can walk on either side of, which is particularly mm -hmm. graceful. It's very graceful. Um, next picture. And all of these railings are different. We don't see railings that are repeating patterns exactly. So we think that they were all custom made specifically for each one of these homes. Mm -hmm. These railings all use circles, as you can see. And there are some similarities, but they're not exactly the same. Next picture. And more commonly, as you would think with straight pieces of metal, you see angular patterns. And notice the way the steps are made. Those are free. Those are poured in place concrete steps that required uh, plywood forms to make them. Mm -hmm. That's expensive. and That's not something you'd be likely to do today for a private home. And the railings, we think, would have been fabricated earlier and mm -hmm. then cast in place, placed with the concrete to be cast around them. And again, that's a, yeah. that's a difficult amount of work that most people wouldn't do today. Next picture. So we see a variety of patterns. The one on the left, I initially thought looked like sailboats. You right. then said that it maybe looks like umbrellas. Um, umbrellas, and then I saw and I that. Th I thought it looked like spades. And, right. So it's you know it's, it's like very a, whimsical. It's very whimsical, <laughs> and it's also you you perceive what you want to perceive. Yeah. Right. And on the right, we've got a circle, but we've got this other thing that you thought looked like a gecko. I thought it looked like a gecko. It, very stylish. With the little arms and legs sticking out. That's right. Next this picture. whole experiment has been a Rorschach test. And he said, totally. What do you see in this pattern? <laughs> This, this is another one. This, this is, is another, another one. one. And this is really good because the boy saw it differently than the girls. Because <laughs> I looked at that and thought, oh, it looks like a propeller. And, and we both we thought actually... it looked like a bow. <laughs> <laughs> but what's cool is that the pattern in, on, the, on the railing is repeated in the mm -hmm. wood that's cut out mm -hmm. on the railing of the front porch there. Yeah. And, I mean, again, for... A small job like this, mm -hmm. how many people would do this today? Very right. few. Well, and the other interesting element of these very small plantation, or not plantation, but plantation-derived yeah. um, homes is that some of the carports, which were also mm -hmm. mimicking these yeah. designs, you'll see them if you notice right. the little details. And I'm not sure that this one had the same repetitive bow or propeller design, 
But once you start looking at those little details throughout Honolulu's neighborhoods, you you'll you really start them. to notice them. And you'll also find, which I don't have in any of these pictures, but there are uh, wooden screening sometimes that mimics the same mm -hmm. pattern yes. as the exactly. railing, yes. which is wonderful. Yes. Next picture. So here we are back to our Chinese motifs, the ancient wisdom of the Orientals. The building in the upper left corner, again, uses longevity in its railing, but it's also mm -hmm. got upturned eaves mm -hmm. to emphasize the Chinese-ness. Upper right corner, that uh, character is for the family name Wong, mm -hmm. and it's written in a more normal calligraphic style. And then mm -hmm. in the lower center, we're not sure exactly what that is stylized. Your parents said longevity again. Maybe they, they know better that than for, we do. They said that for all of them. I know. It's, 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 it's like, <laughs> I'm willing you, to go with it. <laughs> I'm me too. They know more than I do. Well, and the, the thing I love about this is that all of these railings are painted red. And they're red. And that's, <laughs> again, the Chinese color. you got to have it red. Yes. Agreed. Next picture. So this one is kind of the mishmash of everything that we could possibly jam together mm -hmm, into one yes. metal piece. Um, and it looks kind of, again, like it's got longevity <laughs> characters mm -hmm, on the right mm -hmm. side. It has, interestingly enough, swastikas in each corner that are uh, facing inwards. We've mm -hmm. got the symbol, that, that round symbol that we saw in the Academy of Arts. Which is actually similar to the design for the Chinese coin. Absolutely. And it's hard to tell because there's all this other stuff on it. And we wish we could go <laughs> take all that off so we could see it. Um, the swastika mm -hmm. is a very ancient mm -hmm. symbol used in a number mm -hmm. of different cultures. It got ruined by the Nazis using it during World War II. I suspect this is probably pre-war because during and after World War II, swastikas were so tainted by their association with Nazism, it's probable that people wouldn't have used them after that, mm -hmm. I'm going to guess. And you mentioned that not just with this particular residence, but several other buildings built during oh, yeah. the 1930s kind of oh, had yeah. an unfortunate yes. coincidence in yes. timing being built right yeah. before World War II. Right, right. Because up until then, the swastika had no evil associations. And after mm -hmm. that, it did. Next picture. So now we're going to shift finally into looking at just a handful of commercial buildings, or small apartment buildings. So these are two-story walk-up buildings. And again, lots of these in Honolulu. Mm -hmm. And from this time period, again, the late 30s, early 60s, you see a lot of the railings that we're talking about. So these are just plain, angular, but again, they're not the same. They're not standard. They're not coming out of a factory. Uh, next picture, yet another example. And as we mentioned earlier, one of the things that these railings do visually is to cast shadows. And mm -hmm. that's another part of their decorative um, yeah. abilities or their decorative qualities mm -hmm. that is potentially un, uh, possibly unintentional, but it's there nonetheless. Mm -hmm. and I think one of the things that Alyssa and I both love about these small little buildings, too, is that because they all have such distinct custom railing yeah. styles, they make the building themselves look very recognizable, and they give each building yeah. a different character. That is exactly the case, too. And they're not cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. Next picture. And this one in particular is kind of complicated, but quite wonderful, but uh, to my eye, looks dangerous because <laughs> there are these unadorned, unprotected, uh, loose, mm -hmm. just plain ends metal sticking out. And a child could get injured on those. And that's one of the major things that's a consideration now right, that right. The, the railings half cannot allow a child's head to go through, right. which this probably would. And an adult who slipped and fell could be injured as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're sort of chuckling about it, but it's, right. it's a real possibility, is. which is why, again, we're actually lucky that these have not been required to be removed and replaced by other railings because we would have mm -hmm. lost a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Well, um, and then going off of Allison's note earlier, how the railings provide some kind of decorative element, I feel like this one, especially because it's a kind of a plain brick building, provides so much more. Yes. Mm -hmm. decoration to the building itself. Oh, I agree yes. completely. And as we said earlier, these buildings tend to be very austere. They're, mm -hmm. they're very sleek. They're very smooth. They're not decorated a great mm -hmm. deal. And this is the decorative element that you can put on there. It's also in keeping with this kind of industrial, popular, industrial, modern appearance. Right. Space right. age. <laughs> uh, next picture. And this is part of the Trade Winds Complex, mm -hmm. which is located next to the Alawai Canal. And it was built in the late 1940s. 
They've been painted distinctively today so that they are different colors, so they really stand out more than they, they did for most mm -hmm. of their life, but they were mm -hmm. all the same color. But look again at that, at that concrete structure that is not only the base of the stairs, but the second floor lanai or hallway, exterior hallway. And that curve, again, mm -hmm. that's custom-made plywood that you've got to pour in place. You've got to build it and pour it in place and have the, the stairway railings ready to go, too. A lot of work, particularly for this, something this size mm -hmm. that is not likely to be repeated today. No. True. It's a very elegant railing. What I also like is on the upper left image that you have, DeSoto, the railing almost disappears. So when you yeah. look at the, the walkways, it looks like they're floating yeah. as part of the building. Right, right. If you really look nice closely, you can element. see them, mm -hmm. but otherwise, they kind of go away. Mm -hmm. right. Next picture. And this, I think, is right at the end of our period. Mm -hmm. And that zigzaggy up and down line, to me, suggests the diamond pattern, which is very popular in the 1950s. So I'm going to guess this is late 50s, early 60s, right when we're transitioning out of the use of custom mm -hmm. railings. Probably it's too expensive, but in our last two pictures, next, we're going to see what happened. And we see that in the 1950s, we shifted to private homes being built in suburbs that were all standardized. And there was a lot of grading of the lots. So the lots, the, the, the ground was made very smooth. The houses were, when you went to a subdivision, you maybe had a choice of four or five different standardized houses that you could choose from if it wasn't already there. They weren't custom made, and they were all built flat on a cement slab. So there mm -hmm. are no more steps, and you don't need railings anymore. Well, the interesting thing, too, when we talked about earlier is that it's amazing that these, all these railings yeah. that we have seen are in such good condition. I mean, but mm -hmm. the properties of the material itself and corrosion resistant, especially in Hawaii with the salt air, I mean, they still look pretty good for how old they are. They do, mm -hmm. and they look... Elegant and swell, too. Yeah. Yep. And I admitted to you, when I was a kid, I, in the 60s, I used to like to look at these railings and think how cool they were and wish that we had one in my house. Well, I think we they're did. coming back into style. But they're I not so. going to be. I hope so, too. But, you know, um, again, we've got legal requirements now that won't mm -hmm. make them as free, free. form and cookie as they were. And we've also got, um, they're expensive. Mm -hmm. And I think they shifted, you know, when we were seeing these, these are houses that were not expensive houses, mm -hmm. and yet they had this custom work. And today, if it's going to be done, it's going to be good deal more expensive. It's not going to be at the be. level uh, uh, that, that it would have been at the time. Thank you both very much for being here today. And uh, this was a wonderful subject. We had a lot of fun yes, doing this. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, tell us about what's happening with Dokomomo in the near future. So we are hosting, as you know, the Dokomomo Hawaii Symposium. Yes. And we are partnering with the national organization coming from New York. And that will be in September, the end of September. Melissa, do you have the exact dates? And can you tell us a little bit more about it? We're all looking <laughs> no, at you now. <laughs> exactly. It's the last week of September um, from the Wednesday, the Wednesday to the Saturday. And we will be hosting at three different locations. Um, the Outrigger, the East West Center at UH, and at um, the State Capitol. Yeah. So we'll be, ha well, all of us will be, we will. we'll all be there. I'll there. be presenting. We'll be presenting, yes. yes. <laughs> okay, thank you for being here. Thank you for thank, doing thank this. Thank you. And thank you everybody who joined us today on Think Tech for this particular program. We will be seeing you in the near future with other Dokomomo pro uh, Hawaii programs, as well as Human Humane Architecture. You'll be seeing me on those as well. Again, thank you for joining us, and until next time, aloha.